that because I am excited to get today's to today's guest. I'm actually tongue-tied. I'm kind of a, I was a history major in college, and I love history. To, now to the most important part of today of every program. Today's guests are Tyler Osborne and Jerry Taylor with the Towns County Historical Society. Welcome, folks. I flew through that because <laughs> I truly want to get into the history <laughs> of our area. It, it is a area rich in history. Uh, tell me, how did the Towns County Historical Society get started? Well, it actually was started about the 1980s when we were working on Hearthstones of Home, a book of family histories for Towns County, Georgia. And after a while, it languished and kind of came back together in the 1990s. And um, at that time, we began having regular meetings and with regular officers. And uh, uh, Commissioner Jack Dayton appointed me as the official county historian. Well, now we're now we have moved on and up, and Tyler is the president, and he can tell you about that. <laughs> and I will add that this year is Jerry's twenty-fifth year as a county historian. Twenty-five years. Yes. Well, but you kind of had a leg up on this position because today I was talking with one of the young ladies I work with. You taught history here for a good while. Only for 33 years and seven months. <laughs> the seven months was the longest. Did you teach Tyler? No. Okay. You, he retired right before I got oh, to him. <laughs> oh, oh. So now you can work with him. He, he's teaching me after he retired. <laughs> oh, very Oh, Good point. Yeah. Good point. Uh, I love history, and you clearly do, too, if you taught mm -hmm. it for 33 yeah. years. Can uh, how can someone? I noticed I went on your website. Which, by the way, how can someone find your website? What's your site? Townscountyhistory.org. Townscountyhistory.org. Yes. All right. How can someone become a member of the Towns County Historical Society? Tell me a little about that and what are the activities. So our meetings are open to the public. We meet on the second Monday of each month at six p.m. Um, they are. Um, typically at the Civic Center right now during the courthouse renovation. Um, our meeting room is actually at the old rec center where the temporary courthouse is located. Right. Um, we're hoping to be back down there soon. Um, our membership fees are $15 a year, 20 for family. I don't know if I can afford that. I know. $15 it's a year. It's expensive. Two, two, two coffees. <laughs> I know. I know. Budget cuts, but... <laughs> Um, but they with get, they get a free a free program and a, and a meal practically. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, then. every month All we right. have a nice little uh, spread of some finger food. Oh, that's nice. And we meet every month. We have a historical program related to the county. Um, we have a newsletter that comes out quarterly that's part of your membership, and we try to make it beneficial. Well, I will join because I, well, I be this sounds it. like a lot of fun. And that membership forms on our website. All you got to do is print it out and mail it in, or come to our meeting. Now, we got one for you there. Now, I, I know how Mr. Taylor got involved. Uh, he's been involved <laughs> since birth, almost. It yeah, yes. Like. Tell me about yourself, Tyler. How did you get involved with the Towns County Historical Society? Um, well, my dad actually was for, joined, and okay. he did a presentation, and then I joined and started going, and was just kind of going to the meetings. And then I got a call from Jerry one day. He said, hey, do you want to be an officer? <laughs> and that's where it started. <laughs> You and the rest run is run far, right? <laughs> I ran the wrong direction. <laughs> no, I think no, you I'm ran kidding. the right direction. I've enjoyed direction. it. Tell me a little about yourself, Tyler. How did you get involved, though? Um, well, like I said, they asked me if I wanted to run for an officer position. I said, sure, why not? I started as what, secretary. What's your background, though? Oh, my background? Yeah. Um, Born and raised I, I born here? and raised here. Okay. I mean, this okay. is my home. I'm sixth generation, naturally. so it just came naturally to me. Okay, I guess. Yeah. Six generations. Six generation. Wow. Yeah. He, he had studied at Towns County High School a lot of computer stuff, and he had the, the skills that we needed. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. I, I do. If you're in business or do anything nowadays, content, the delivery of content through the computer is... So important. Let's talk about some of y'all's projects. Now, you were, Tyler, you were previously here and we spoke about the Barong Oakley House. Mm -hmm. uh, found that fascinating. Yep. I love that our community is uh, keeping our history, mm -hmm. so to speak. We're not tearing down statues. Exactly. Tell me <laughs> a little about uh, where, where we are. And for those that 
perhaps aren't familiar with the Brong Oakley House, can you, you Just start at point story. A? Yes, sir. So the Brong Oakley House is the second oldest house in, within the city limits. Um, the city defined it as a structure that needed to be saved back in 2018 in their strategic plan. And they finally were able to purchase it last summer. And when they purchased it, they asked the Historical Society to manage the restoration of it. Um, we have, I'm happy to announce, officially raised $50,000 so far since last June, um, which is a big accomplishment. Sure. So we are restoring it to be used as an event center and museum for the downtown area of Hawassi. Very good. Um, but the people who built it, um, Jay Miles and Maggie Brong, they were influential people in the area. He was a senator. She was a lifelong educator. Um, just real movers and shakers for the city and where it is today. So we owe that to them to preserve their house. No, like you're Ms. not. Miss Maggie was the first woman to go to college from Towns County. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's the first woman from Towns County to be educated. Now, Tyler or Mr. Taylor, y'all aren't swinging hammers out there, I don't think. So, no, so how are y'all yeah. managing? <laughs> I'm looking at both you grinning and laughing, so I know you're not swinging hammers or saw it. Uh, when you say you're managing, just trying to keep it historic, I mean, you have photographs, or tell me a little about managing the restoration of, a, of the home. We're the ones managing, hiring, helping hire the contractors, finding the contractors. Um, so the first thing we did was get the roof contractors, so the city needed three bids, so we went out and found um, the bids for them, presented okay. them to the city, the council, since they were paying for that, they made the decision on who they wanted to hire from there. Um, but then here from the donations we're raising here from on out, we, the society, will make that decision. Okay. We'll Tyler, Tyler, tell them what we've accomplished so far. Oh, there's a long list. <laughs> 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 I mean, we've had preservation reports done on the house. We've hired a private preservationist. Um, we've had a survey done on the home, um, an inspection done. The house is actually surprisingly stable and sound considering its age and the fact that it's basically set vacant since the 80s right. um, and that's all there's a special page on Facebook dedicated to the house the Brong Oakley house on Facebook then that's all listed on there of everything we've accomplished are there any before and after or any photos of the home slowly I'm putting them on there but we are wanting once we get some progress made on the inside and get it more a little bit cleaned up and safer um, one of the goals is to kind of have like a small open house um, to help raise some money, charge a small entry fee, so because people oh, want to sure. come in and see sure, it. Sure, sure. How one, many? One neat, really, one really neat thing is that we located the original uh, architect plans for the bit house. Mm -hmm. Where? The family had them. Amazing! It's, what a blessing. Yeah. yeah. So we have the original blueprints. That is cool. Yeah. How many fireplaces do you know? Uh, da, da, da. One, two, three, four, five. 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 I've been in the home one time, and I was like, good golly. But, I mean, I guess they didn't have central Cent heat and air, back. central <laughs> heat and air back then. <laughs> so a fireplace up here would be rather important, yep. I, I, I'm thinking. Yep. A beautiful home. Beautiful I am home. so excited for its yes. final restoration. We're that, excited. You can see it from Main Street now, so that was a huge goal right there. All right. Do you have, is there any estimate or is it just as the Lord provides the money? As the Lord uh, provides <laughs> the money and the funding. So, okay. and we have naming opportunities for anyone All on right. our website if right. anyone's interested in donating. And again, what's that website? Townscountyhistory.org. Townscountyhistory.org. Now, tell me a little about the Old Rock Jail Museum. I'm going to hand that over to Jerry because that was kind of before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, in Towns County, the idea of saving things is not there. If it's old, you tear it down. That's true everywhere. And put up something cheap and crappy. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you, brother. <laughs> so uh, we, the Old Rock Jail is just from 1936, but in terms of old stuff, it's old in Towns County, and especially Hiawassee. So anyhow, Commissioner Kendall uh, reached out to the Historical Society and offered it for us to open as a museum. And so we've just been very fortunate. And people gave lots of uh, items to use in there as a museum. And it was going very, very well. We were open on Fridays and Saturdays from noon to 4 until the courthouse renovation. So all of our stuff had to be moved and is just temporarily stored in there. And, of course, it's not open until the courthouse renovation is complete. 
can you describe? Now, you said 1936. Yes. A lot has changed. I'm, I, I, I've not personally been in the local jail today, but I've driven by it, and it's rather large over there. Can you tell me how it was in 1936? In 1936, <laughs> it had the sheriff's quarters downstairs and the prisoners upstairs. Uh, downstairs, there was a living room and a kitchen and two bedrooms with a hallway and bathroom and, of course, a back porch and a front porch. And stairs from the uh, front porch went up to the prisoners' quarters, which consisted <clears throat> of three big rooms. One of the rooms had the cages from the original 1905 jail, and uh, the uh, uh, other the other prisoner room was like a ward that was <laughs> it had I think six bunk beds in there. And then, then in addition, there was the sheriff's office up there. And that's the one we've turned into a military room celebrating uh, our veterans from <coughs> Charles County, especially the ones that died in World War I and World War II. Speaking of that, when I was on your website, you have a uh, page dedicated uh, to the military for World War One and mm -hmm. World War II. Are those pictures what you've just referenced? Yes, that, yes. And so they're at the historic uh, rock, Old Rock Jail Museum, but they're also online. Right. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, folks, if you've not been to their website, I encourage you to. They've got a lot of great information on the newspapers through time. I, the, the Hawassi Times in the 1890s, the Young Harris News, Look like 1912, 1914, mm. the Northeast Georgia, uh, Georgian, 1915, and the Towns County Advertiser, 1922 and 23. All those were newspapers before the Towns County Herald, <laughs> which came into existence in 1928. The Herald did? Mm-hmm. Also, it's been it's around almost a long 100 time. years. Wow, that, that's fascinating. The school system, that also fascinated me. A lot of different school systems. Every community had a school, a store, a mill, and a post office. <laughs> post office. Tell me, uh, now, this, we, uh, I haven't read this anywhere. Uh, is the historical post office gone now? Uh, the only post office now are Hiawassee and Young Harris. Right. But in the old days, every community had a post office. Right. For instance, Hightower, there was Titus, Georgia, uh, um, Visage, Georgia, Bell Creek had Hunt, Georgia, Young Harris had Brasstown, Georgia, Gumlog, Georgia, and just there were lots of post offices. The mail didn't come to your house. The mail came to a post office, and you went there to pick your mail up. We may eventually get back to that system. Yeah, the well, okay. Well, speak, speaking of that, uh, <laughs> Presley Post Office, which was up on Hiawassee River, the uh, Many years ago, uh, the Historical Society saved that post office, renovated it, and moved it to Hiawassee. So it's it's still in existence as a little museum. And Where Where's that at? Next to the courthouse. Next to the courthouse. Yeah, there's that little uh, island in the parking lot at the courthouse. It's that little blue building that sits in that island. Very good, very yeah. good. What also grabbed me when I look back at some of your newsletters, uh, that $15, y'all definitely need to go up. $15 a year. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and, and I say this because of the lectures. I noticed back in January you had a lecture exploring our local mining history. Yes. That was part one, so part two is going to be coming this year too. All right. And then in November there was the history of North Georgia's man-made lakes. Mm -hmm. That one looked fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Uh, coupled with the one back in October, Out of the Lake, the story of the relocation of Towns County residents from Chateauk Reservoir in 1941. I gave that program. I researched the TVA records of the people that were actually moved and how much money they were given and where they moved to and so on and so forth. Should they have kept their land? <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't be a lake here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I you still love be in business. Uh, I still love lakefront, so I, I'm very happy, but I feel sad. <laughs> I'm not big on takings, the government coming in and saying, we're going to take this from you and we're going to pay you this. <laughs> they were they were contracted with, it was a, a contractual agreement between the 
the United States and the local landowner. And uh, of nearly 500 uh, families, three in Towns County refused to uh, or did not contract, and it went to court and was eminent domain. Just so three. That's fascinating. Fascinating. So there were how how many families got relocated? Uh, nearly five hundred. Nearly five hundred, and only three. And that would have been let me see, nineteen forty one. That's right, nineteen forty one. Out of five, uh, today I would say out of five hundred, there'd probably be five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of this took place from August to December thirty first, nineteen forty one. That fast. That fast. Wow. That th- that would never happen today. Well, one one reason that made it pretty fast was that people here are patriotic. Yes. Their their blood is red, white, and blue. And part of this was uh, uh, the patriotic movement of helping the Allies in World War II. 1941. Because the the water was needed down the way. I get it. That is fascinating. Then uh, back in September, there was uh, Saved or Raised, the story of our historical buildings and homes. Mm-hmm. That that one was that was one me and Jerry did. So that one actually come about because of the Brong House. When I was doing research on it, I came across the historic survey that was done of Towns County in the early seventies, and um, we found this list of homes that the state had did, and got to looking of how many were still around and how many weren't. So we turned it into a presentation. That is fascinating. And we've given it several times since then um, at community presentations. The Let's go back to the one you did in January, uh, exploring our local mining history. Who who presented that one? Bruce, Bruce Roberts, who is one of our members, um, he's one of those who loves to go out and explore the woods. He'll go find old home locations, old mines. He'll go photograph them. He's really great at documenting these for our future does records. he lead like a trail of breadcrumbs if he goes into a mine that, that, that sounds <laughs> he a does scary. go into the mines the, there's the, some of these pictures i mean he'll fit into a hole it, you don't know how he got in and out of them yeah that that uh I, i'd look and, at the photos yeah. and i'd i'd weep it looking at yeah. that as far as that mining history there was more mining here in the 1800s than you would imagine that's fine. what were they mining for gold mica quartz uh all Corundum, rubies, all kinds of minerals. Very interesting. A lot of the deeds today will uh, will have an ex- a clause reserving the mineral rights. Very. Oh, very good. Do you know when um, the other? Do you know when part two of exploring our local mining history will be? Not yet, but it'll be on our Facebook page ah. and our website. <laughs> okay, plug your Facebook page. What page is that? Facebook page, Towns County Historical Society, and again, our website is townscountyhistory.org. Folks, our guests today have been uh, Tyler Osborne and Jerry Taylor with the Towns County Historical Society. There's a reason I love this area, and it's its rich history, and I love that we're red, white, and blue. Thank you for putting that out there, Mr. Taylor, and it still is that way to a great extent. We're blessed to live up here. Thank you so much.